Coming up on Hands On Mac, a feature introduced in iOS 17 that helps simplify the operating system. Stay tuned. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This This is Twit. Welcome back to Hands On Mac. I am Micah Sargent, and today we're taking a look at easily one of the coolest features, I think, that was introduced in iOS 17, a feature that will help make sure that you, uh, well, probably not you as someone who's watching this show, but someone you know can use their device and understand every aspect of it. It is a feature that simplifies the user interface, and it was a feature that was introduced for uh, folks with perhaps cognitive dis- cognitive disabilities or uh, cognitive complications, but I think it's a feature that may be a good feature for anyone who has trouble navigating their phone. Uh, We talked last time about guided access on the iPhone. This time we're talking about assistive access. And this feature is jam-packed with settings and options that really, I think, will make an iPhone so much easier to use. By the way, it also works with iPadOS. So let's take a look at how this is set up on an iPhone. All right, here we are on the iPhone, and we're going to go to the settings app as we have done before. Uh, We will scroll down until we get to accessibility, and we will scroll down to the bottom under general. Under general, you will see guided access. That's what we talked about in the last episode of Hands on Mac. This time we're talking about assistive access. I'll tap on it, and I will choose set up assistive access. Now, this presents us with a prompt to kind of talk about what's part of assistive access. So we'll tap continue. Uh, We make sure that the phone is associated with the right person. We want this to be for uh, the Apple ID that is actually going to be using this. We don't want it to be that you set up your phone for someone who needs this, right? So say uh, you're setting up your phone for uh, Uncle Charlie. Well, Uncle Charlie needs to be the one logged in to the device. Uh, If it is you that's logged into the device to help get Uncle Charlie set up, change it during this step. We'll tap continue, and then we have an option. We can either do a row of icons or a grid of icons. And I'm going to choose grid, but again, you can choose row or grid, and you can switch between them as you need to. So grid is what we'll choose. And then we select the apps that get to be part of the assistive access uh, setup. Now, there are apps that are optimized for assistive access. These are the apps that Apple has created that is built in, and they have some additional features that can be customized. So we want Uncle Charlie to be able to make calls. And when we tap on any of these apps uh, with the, the plus icon to add it to assistive access, it is going to pop up with a prompt that will have more settings if the app has more settings. So for calls, when we tap plus, we can choose to let Uncle Charlie receive calls from only selected contacts that we would then choose from all contacts, meaning every contact that is in Uncle Charlie's list or from everyone. So if Uncle Charlie complains about getting calls from strangers, this is a great way to make sure that Uncle Charlie only receives calls from the contacts that you have chosen for Uncle Charlie. We'll choose everyone. And then we can also choose who Uncle Charlie can call. So let's say that um, Uncle Charlie has a habit of accidentally calling a bunch of people and thinking that they're, they're you. You could say, limit it to these family members. These are the people that Uncle Charlie's able to call. Now, you then have the option to either disable or enable the dialer keypad. That means that Uncle Charlie won't see the numbers to be able to place a call, but instead will only see the contacts if we have show dialer keypad turned off. Importantly, this means that Uncle Charlie cannot use the dialer keypad to contact emergency services. There is another way to contact emergency services by triple pressing the side button. But if Uncle Charlie has some cognitive disabilities, that might be more difficult, If especially if Uncle Charlie is used to calling 911 using the dialer keypad. So that is a choice that you would make. Uh, in this case, I'm going to toggle it on. And then in the call options, you have the option to say, No, I don't want Uncle Charlie to be able to press numbers while he's on the phone. And yes or no, I want Uncle Charlie to be able to turn on the speaker to do a speakerphone call. I'm going to choose to turn that on. Basically, by having it off, it makes that display of a phone call simpler. It it limits it so that it doesn't 
it's not as complicated. We'll tap continue. Now calls has been added to the list. We'll choose camera next and you have options. Uncle Charlie can take photos, photo selfies, videos, and video selfies. Uh, let's say photos, photo selfies, and video. Uh, we'll tap continue. Uh, next is messages. And this is going to be similar. Who all can Uncle Charlie send or receive, or rather receive messages from first? We'll choose all contacts. Who can he send messages to? Uh, we'll leave that blank, meaning that he can send messages to anyone. Um, whether he can tap to hear a message and whether he can uh, have information about conversation details. So what the date is that the message was sent and whether it was delivered or not. Again, this is a simple option to simplify a complicated user interface. So if Uncle Charlie gets confused by seeing the dates on there and seeing that sent versus delivered versus read, if people have read receipts turned on, Toggling this off, keeping conversation details turned off can keep things simple to not confuse Uncle Charlie. Then you have the option of how uh, and what can be used to send messages back. So keyboard, we'll keep that on. Do we want Uncle Charlie to be able to send video selfies? We'll turn that off since we turned that off uh, in the camera. And then can Uncle Charlie send emojis? Sure. Um, maybe you have a relative or whomever you're setting this up for who gets confused by those images, or maybe you only want them to be able to send emoji back. This is another way to do that. So you don't always have to think about somebody with cognitive disabilities. It could be a child, for example, that you want to set up the phone with. We'll tap continue, then music. And with this, you can limit it to a specific playlist. Uh, so if you want to say, these are the only playlists that are able to be uh, used, we can do that. Now I'm just going to choose to add music and we'll tap continue. And then last we have photos and with photos, uh, we can either toggle on or toggle off shared albums. So it, this is something that we want to turn on because these are photo albums that, you know, you have with family members. Uh, and then the, the shared albums will pop up and you can choose which ones are able to be shared with Uncle Charlie. From there, we can look through and see apps that have not been adapted for assistive touch. So these can still be on the home screen, but when Uncle Charlie opens them, they are going to look like the normal app. So it's not simplified. We'll give Uncle Charlie the calculator. We're going to give Uncle Charlie the clock and we are going to give Uncle Charlie the health app. And with this, we are immediately presented with a prompt. And this is important. Uh, assistive access simplifies things so that there aren't a bunch of prompts that pop up that kind of confuse the person. So when the person launches the app, they're not going to see the prompt that you would normally get that says, hey, can I have access to location? Hey, can I have access to send notifications? That kind of thing. No, you were setting this up ahead of time for Uncle Charlie. So in this case, yes, while using the app, health can have access to the location. And yes, I want to give it precise location access. Uh, from there, I'll scroll through. And I've decided I also want to give Uncle Charlie access to notes and news. And once again, we're prompted under news for access to location and whether news has access to face ID, we will choose to allow. And now we've got our apps selected. Now, if we scroll back to the top, you will see next to each of the apps, there is a circle with a uh, red well, it's a red circle with a minus sign in the middle. That is so you can remove an app. If you've decided, no, I don't want Uncle Charlie to have access to this anymore, you hit that to remove it. On the right, there are three lines. Those three lines uh, stacked on top of each other are an indication that in this list, you can select to move things around. So maybe we know Uncle Charlie mostly sends messages. We'll tap and hold on those three lines and drag messages to the top. Then he would uh, place calls. Afterwards is camera. Then probably look at photos, then music, calculator, clock, all the rest. So we've got the order that we want. We'll tap continue. And then here is some information. Again, remember how I said, if Uncle Charlie doesn't have access to the dialing pad, the keypad in the phone app, how do you place an emergency call? You triple click the side button to access emergency calling. And some automated services um, are not going to be available. So emergency uh, satellite is a feature that's not available in assistive access. Um, 
app notifications do not appear on the screen. They instead appear as badges. So if you want to see actual notifications and uh, information about software updates, you have to exit assistive access to see that information. Again, this is to simplify the experience and keep these confusing things from popping up and getting in the way. And then app privacy information and certain status icons, those do not show. So up at the top of the screen where we have the uh, current cellular connection, the Wi-Fi, those also will display a little location icon at times whenever an app is using location. That's not going to be there again, to simplify the experience. So we'll tap continue. And then we need to uh, set this up for actually uh, locking. So this says assistive access and unlocking iPhone. Face ID and a passcode have been set up for this iPhone. Confirm that the primary user of this iPhone can authenticate with face ID and they also know the passcode. So we will tap continue um, because we know that Uncle Charlie's face ID works and he knows how to use face ID. And we know that he knows his passcode and how to type it in to be able to gain access. You can always change security settings if you're worried that Uncle Charlie doesn't know how to do that. So we'll tap continue. And then now I'm going to set a password, a passcode that's specific to uh, assistive access to turn it on or turn it off. So I will type that in now and that will allow me to gain access to that. Now, this is great too, because you can set what's called a recovery Apple ID. So this is an Apple ID, probably yours, that you can use if you don't remember the assistive access passcode. So I will choose to set a recovery Apple ID, and I am going to type in my email. So I'm gonna switch away from this view really quick and actually type in my phone number because that will be faster. And now that I've typed in my password, um, I can see that I have, you know, properly authenticated and that my Apple ID is being used to uh, provide a backup if I forget the code. And then to exit assistive access, I use simply triple click the side button, enter the passcode, and that will turn off assistive access. Now it is ready. So I'm going to choose to hit the blue button that says start using assistive access. I will type in the passcode and now I am in uh, a black screen pops up to say entering assistive access. And once we uh, let the system kind of load that in, we'll be able to see what this looks like. So um, up pops the assistive access menu and it doesn't look like it's trying to appear on screen, which is rather unfortunate. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, switch views here and we will simply uh, show it on screen. So here I have uh, messages, calls, camera, photos, music, calculator, clock, health, notes, and news. If I tap on messages, it's a huge uh, option, and I tap on more, I can choose who I want to contact. So I would tap on a contact, and I would be presented with the ability to uh, respond to that person. I can go back and I can choose calls and I am presented with a little uh, spot where I can type in a phone number. So I'd be able to type in that phone number and call them if I wanted to. Uh, the camera does indeed give me three options, photo, photo, selfie, and video. So I could place or take a photo. Um, the photos app does pop up with my photos listed in here. I can tap on a photo to be able to look at it closer and uh, see it kind of up close. Now, this is a photo that has some 3D functionality built in. So let me actually find one that is much simpler to view that way. Um, it just pops up. So there's a photo of a mural in Coit Tower in San Francisco. And Uncle Charlie's able to access all of that. And remember, this is a special view where everything is quite large. Now, music is empty because we didn't choose a playlist. So Uncle Charlie would need to choose or we would need to choose a playlist for Uncle Charlie to be able to play music from that. But the calculator shows up and it's the normal calculator app, although it does have the big back button at the bottom in its place. Now, swiping at the bottom of the screen does nothing. So it won't uh, take us to the home screen. Swiping in the top right does nothing. It does not bring down control center. Swiping in the middle does not bring down notification center. None of those uh, gestures that we're used to actually do anything. When I tap the three dots on the side of the screen, uh, if we actually tap them. Um, so let me try that again. We'll tap three to or click three times, one, two, three. 
then up will pop a settings menu that says settings, emergency and exit assistive access. So I can exit assistive access by tapping on it and type in my passcode, at which point assistive access will exit. But here we have uh, the normal view for assisted or with with assistive access turned off. Um, we could easily re-enter assistive access if we wanted to uh, by once again going into settings, uh, going into accessibility and then choosing assistive access. Now, once you've set it up once, it becomes much simpler to interact with because assistive access has all of those applications. So with it, we can easily start assistive access again by tapping start assistive access at the top of the menu. Um, the applications are listed and all of our settings are listed as well. Um, there are a few settings that are available in the assistive access menu uh, that we'll talk about in just a moment. So in the assistive access menu, uh, in the settings, you are able to make changes, make adjustments to the applications. Uh, each of the individual applications has all of the settings that you would have seen when you were setting up assistive access, but now there are a few more. Uh, for example, you can change the wallpaper that's available for Uncle Charlie. You can choose to allow or disallow the volume buttons. Um, you can allow silent mode, so whether or not that ring silent switch is actually enabled and whether or not it turns on silent mode. You can show the time or not show the time on the lock screen, show the battery level on the home screen, so again, we said we would that that's taken away uh, by default to kind of simplify things and then whether or not even notification badges are displayed to let Uncle Charlie know that he has missed messages. Uh, lastly, you have the option to allow Siri or disallow Siri. Um, I would recommend not having that turned on, although some people do like communicating with Siri. So maybe Uncle Charlie is one of those people. Uh, and then last but not least are the passcode options. You can choose to change uh, the assistive access passcode. Again, once you have it all set up, you can manage the apps by adding new apps to the experience, uh, taking some away, changing those settings. And at any time you go settings, you go accessibility, you go start assistive access and assistive access will pop up again. I think this is an incredibly amazingly powerful way to simplify iOS and iPadOS for those folks who have trouble using this system. It can be complicated and it's got a lot of features that a lot of people don't necessarily need. So consider using assistive access for uh, family members or others who uh, don't necessarily need all of the features that are available in iOS and iPadOS. Folks, that's going to bring us to the end of this episode of Hands on Mac. Of course, you can email me, Micah, at twit.tv if you have specific questions, comments, if there are uh, requests that you have for coverage that I, uh, you know, questions that I answer or subjects that I cover. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for being a member of Club Twit. If you are listening to this uh, via audio and you'd like to see the video version of this show, consider subscribing by joining Club Twit at twit.tv slash club twit. Thanks so much, and I will see you next week for another episode of Hands on Mac. Bye-bye.